There goes the bullet train. We're at Akihabara Station. Akihabara is a major station on the JR network where the Yamanote and the Keihin Tohoku lines pass through. And we're going to be getting on the train and stopping next, a few stops later, at Tokyo Station. Watch out! The Yamanote line, coded in green, has a ridership of over 4 million passengers a day and is quite crowded as it hits 30 of the major spots in Tokyo in a loop line going in opposite directions. Just a few minutes later we'll arrive at Tokyo Station where we'll walk through to the Yaesu side and get out the south exit. Thanks to our three-week JR pass, we don't need to buy tickets to get on the train or to exit the station, nor do we need to make use of the wonderful Suika or IC card, mm -hmm. which many people use to get around town. Tokyo Station is the busiest in Japan, with 3,000 trains passing through per day, but it's the fifth busiest in terms of passengers. Under normal conditions, the most busy station in Japan is Shinjuku, handling 3 million passengers per day. In fact, it's the busiest station in the world. The busiest station in Europe is in France with only 900,000 passengers per day. Situated in the Marunouchi district, a business and financial center, this station is close to the Imperial Palace and to Hibiya Park. This exterior plaza was completed in 2018 and is part of a larger renovation project wherein Tokyo Station was restored and renovated to its former glory. Begun in 2010, the restoration of the building was completed in 2014 for the 100 year anniversary of the building of Tokyo Station. Navigating between the Marunouchi side and the Yaesu side may not appear that difficult, but once you get underground, it's really easy to lose your way as it's a very large, sprawling urban complex underneath, complete with shopping malls and wonderful restaurant streets. Notice the stately cupolas that appear above the rotundas at either end of the station. Also notice the sharp brickwork and detailed fenestration. This central space is built to impress. When a visitor first gets off the bullet train and exits Tokyo Station and walks around peering up at the tall, stately Marunouchi buildings, Tokyo's economic power and grandeur is in full-on display. Planned in 1899 and then voted in by the government in 1896, Tokyo Station was designed by Tatsuno Kingo. Construction began in 1908, after the first Sino-Japanese and Russo-Japanese wars were concluded. The station had a beautiful brickwork and lovely cupolas at each end of the building, with one large one in the middle. Tokyo Station was built to be a central node on the Yamanote line, connecting to Ueno and Shinbashi. Shinbashi was one of the first stations ever opened in 1872, connecting Tokyo to Yokohama in Japan's first railway. As Japan modernized by the 1960s with the advent of the bullet train, Tokyo Station would be a central node connecting to all parts of the country. Here's how the station appeared after completion in 1914. This ambitious western style building took about six years to complete and is quite an impressive feat. The form of this building rivaled some of the best design stations in Europe.
Rickshaws, bicycles, horse-drawn carts, and streetcars were the preferred method of overground transportation. It would take a while for cars to increase in popularity by the late 19-teens. The Great Kanto Earthquake, or the Kanto Daishinsai of 1923, left many thousands dead and destroyed most of the buildings in Tokyo. Fortunately, Tokyo Station was mildly damaged, but lived through it as it was a very strongly built building with a nice steel framework. became a rallying place and a place of safety for many in uncertain times. By the late 1920s and 1930s, a newly rebuilt Tokyo was on an upward trend. This was a time period before the militarization of Japan. And in this footage, you can see Japan's budding modernity on full display. Western-style clothes with Japanese-style clothes, orderly stations and streets, streetcar tracks and wires above the head for power transmission, telegraph wires, cars, people on foot, buses. All of these things were part of the urban experience as the area around Tokyo Station grew up into the Maronochi district. But in 1945, disaster struck Tokyo yet again, but this time in the form of man-made bombs dropped by the Allies in an attempt to stop the Japanese government from pursuing their efforts in East Asia during World War II. B-29s dropped incendiary bombs, killing over 120,000 people in one night alone. The station was mostly destroyed. And yet the trains kept running, bringing people back from the front, refugees from the colonized areas, returning back home to Japan and going to their hometowns. The train network was as important as ever. And here we can see one of the famous C-58 style trains. 
Tokyo Station would be rebuilt after the war, but without its tremendous cupolas. To save cost and time, an angled roof was built rather than the elaborate cupolas. But for its centennial, painstaking attention to detail was paid in order to recreate those cupolas and restore the station to its former glory. If you get on the Keihin Tohoku line for about 40 minutes, you'll find yourself in Omiya, in Saitama Prefecture, where the train museum, the Japanese Rail Transport Museum, is located. And here you can see examples that still can operate of the original steam trains that had been used for a number of years and were retired after the war. This particular locomotive saw its last service in 1975. And yet, just like in the States, nostalgia for the steam era is large and deep. In fact, at this museum, one of the more popular attractions was a train simulator where you could pay a little bit to get behind the wheel, or levers, of a giant steam locomotive, just like the one you see here. Almost as popular are the Shinkansen and electric train simulators. Speaking of Shinkansens, after its inaugural launch in 1964, the Shinkansen technology has only gotten better and better. From the earliest Zero series to the current N700 on the east-west Tokaido line, linking Tokyo to Osaka and Kyoto, the 200, E1, E2, E4, and E5, and now E7, which head north on the Hokuriku and Joetsu lines, and then the 400, E3, E6, and E8, which go to the distant northeast of Yamagata and Akita. These sleek, reliable, stylish, narrow-gauge train lines are built for speed and comfort. This is the latest in the line of the JR East Shinkansen, the E7, built by Hitachi. No matter where you want to go, a rail line of one kind or another will get you at least a kilometer from where your final destination is. The JR network, connected to various private lines and subways, span all throughout East Japan, and in particular Tokyo. Glancing at this map, it looks like a chaotic mass of spaghetti. But once you get to know the colors and the major geography that the lines cover, it's very logical. Meanwhile, the Shinkansen has certain key lines reaching from Sapporo in the north down to the Tohoku Shinkansen, then to the Tokaido Shinkansen, and then finally to the Sanyo and Kyushu Shinkansen to the southwest. Currently getting off at Kashiwanoha campus off of the Tsukuba Express line which runs from Akihabara station where we started today all the way out to the end of the line in Ibaraki prefecture. gates that close after the doors close. This is to prevent people from falling onto the tracks or sometimes sadly jumping onto the tracks. Beginning service in 2005, the Tsukuba Express is one of the more recently built commuter lines that connects the bedroom towns in Chiba and Ibaraki to Tokyo. It takes about 45-50 minutes to get from the end of the line in Ibaraki down to Akihabara on the fastest express. The train covers about 130 kilometers per hour at its top speed. 
The final station at Akihabara is roughly 40 meters below the surface, which is one of the deeper stations in Japan. The deepest station in Tokyo is 42.3 meters on the Oedo subway line. The TX-1000, 2000 and now 3000 series trains are all built by Hitachi and they are maintained out in Ibaraki and we were able to go on a tour of the facility that shows all of the types of maintenance they need to do to keep the rolling stock in tip-top shape. The train carriages can be lifted off of their trucks and be maintained from underneath on, as the tracks move into these large hangar style structures. This station shows the mechanics to raise and lower the pantograph, which is that metal part that is above the train that connects to the overhead power wires that bring electricity down to the electric motors in the trucks of each carriage. Mm -hmm. High-efficiency air conditioning units such as these sit atop of each carriage and keep customers cool in the summer months. Now when you think factory or repair area, rarely might you think of a place as clean or as efficient or as orderly as this, but that's part of the Japanese pride of design and functionality that is included in the workspace. Wow, look at how big the brakes are. The brake rotors are huge. More than just a way of getting around, trains connect people to each other and places to places. They bridge the spaces of lives, tying the future to the past. They put people into close proximity with one another that might not always be in the same space or might never have been in the same space to begin with. They create the opportunity for chance encounters as well as uncomfortable encounters that nobody really wants. Rules for train etiquette, including not speaking loudly and not using one's cell phone, brought about the popularity of SMS and text messaging, and can also be traced back to the importance of the personal portable stereo or the Walkman, creating a personal space inside of a public space that one has to be on and cannot escape. But because of the highly efficient, predictable, almost never late trains and their ubiquitous timetables, you can always expect to get around comfortably and easily, even if somewhat crowded. There is no need for a car. There is no need for a more expensive method of transportation because the trains are so well planned out. And once you get outside of the city, the train is a great way to observe the natural scenery rolling by at high speed as you can glance across the housetops rice fields, vegetable fields, and into the mountains. In her noteworthy book, Alyssa Friedman discusses how trains have shaped Japanese culture and how Japanese culture has reflected that in literature and in art. Recently, Makoto Shinkai's films such as Your Name and Five Centimeters Per Second make use of trains to show people being connected as well as separated by distance 
and how the train tracks which crisscross the land can separate one person from another depending on which side of the track they're on. His characters Taki and Mitsuha keep missing each other and seeing each other through the windows on opposite trains and can never get off and meet each other at the station properly. The trains separate them as well as try to connect Tokyo to the countryside. Whether it's a classical diesel train, a high-speed bullet train, a regular electric train, or a subway, you'll always find a way to get around Japan using the rails. It's no understatement to say that trains are a crucial aspect of life in Japan and are a delight to many as well as a frustration to many commuters. However, Getting on board and using the train, and understanding the people who use the trains, and the culture they have created around the trains, will give us much deeper insight into the modernity of Japan.